I was actually with. It already went what? It already went down. And it's back up. I'm not seeing it over here yet. Oh, oh that's why. Okay. I wrote all that stuff on the whiteboard. I can't see it. It's bad. So if it drops, the screen does not go black on the live. It just freezes for a second. Okay. Happy New Year. 52 people. All right, guys. Everybody see me all right? through some new software here so just just bear with us I mean go ahead all right switch the camera switch to the other camera how's the other camera look everybody <laughs> looks great with no fly in there <laughs> okay much better Give myself a headache. Get this a little closer, man. I can't see. A second camera look good. An awful lot of clicking going on over there. I'm adjusting things. <laughs> Sounds and looks great. Okay, looks good. All right, cool. We're going to get started. All right, guys. What have we got? 57 on. So, um, happy new year to everybody. Um, as I mentioned, we're we're working with some new software tonight. Um, we, we've it, it's it's in an effort to to give you guys a better experience and and some of the things that we're able to do. Hopefully, you're going to be able to see tonight. Um, th there are a couple of glitches that we're working our way through. Um, I think that we have them worked out. If if it freezes or if it drops for some reason, just hang in there. It should pop right back. Um, th there's a couple of settings that we need to get dialed in, so we're uh, we're working on it. Um, so yeah, happy New Year, everybody. Um, glad that you're here with us again on Sunday night. Tonight, um, this live event was sponsored by Tuckasegee Fly Shop. Uh, they're good friends of ours down there in. Um, they have two locations, one in Bryson City and one in Silva, North Carolina. Uh, you can call them at 828, and I can't see it, 488-3333. <laughs> it's literally like three feet away, and I can't see it. So um, their Instagram is Tuck Fly Shop, uh, at Tuck Fly Shop. Facebook is Tuck CG Fly Shop. YouTube, Tuck CG Fly Shop. We are giving, um, they're giving away a 10 pack of spools for every 50 shares that we have tonight. So um, share early, share often, and for every 50, we're gonna pick a winner and you're gonna get a 10 pack of uh, Norvice spools. Okay, so let's uh, let's let's get started. Put them glasses on. <laughs> it's, it's weird, if I have my contacts in, I have to wear readers to see the fly. If I take my contacts out, I can see the fly nice and clear, but I can't I can't see things that are more than about three feet away. All right, so the first fly that we're going to tie is this, um, we're doing pickerel flies tonight, flies for chain pickerel. <laughs> what? Jane commented, said periwinkle bites. <laughs> yeah, no, periwinkle's the purple one. Um, so chain pickerel, where, where we live in northern Delaware, um, the, all of the ponds down in the lower part of the state are absolutely full of largemouth bass and chain pickerel. And if, if you've never chased pickerel before, they are a ton of fun, especially on fly gear. They will, they will readily take a fly um, very, very aggressively. Pickerel are a member of the Esox family. 
which include Northern Pike and everybody's favorite, the Muskie. Um, they are not nearly as big as their, their, um, their two bigger cousins, but I, I think that they, they take flies a bit more aggressively than, than pike and, and even a, um, even a muskie for sure. So I've got just a, this is a, a mustad. It's a, actually a junk mustad hook. This, this section doesn't matter because the, we're going to clip the back of the hook off anyway. Um, and what we're going to tie, we're going to tie O'Neill's snot rocket. So this is, this is a snot rocket. This is a um, fly that we designed for chain pickerel. This is actually, um, this one's in all white. This is the fly that Tyler used to catch his big uh, northern pike a couple of years ago. It was um, right at about 40 inches. So this is a triple stage snot rocket with the hook in the, um, in the front. This one, I'm, I'm going to see where we are on time. We tie them in single, double, and triple stage. Um, if it's a double stage, we have a shank and a hook in the front. If it's a single, obviously it's just a hook. If it's a triple, a lot of times I'll put the hook right in the middle because um, these type of, of fish are known for grabbing a fly in the middle, T-boning the fly, and then shaking it. And that's that's why we put the hook right in the middle. So I've got a... Um, you got to tell me I didn't switch to the small I, I wasn't ready yet. to switch to, to oh, the camera well, yet. I've got guys asking about it. So I've got a, um, I've got a, just a, a junk um, mustad hook in here. It's, it's a long shanked hook, and like I said, we're going to clip the, um, we're going to clip the, uh, the, the bend of the hook off. And really, there's only a couple of materials in this fly. It's a lot of marabou, and we control the, the flare or the taper with different size dubbing balls. Okay, and if you remember. A couple of weeks ago, I did a fly that we called the Junior Snot Rocket, and it was a little bait fish pattern that we used for steelhead. Well, that fly is a smaller version of this fly that we're going to tie now. So I'm using Vivas 6-op, um, uh, Vivas, what's it, Ultra Thread or Super Thread or whatever that stuff's called. Um, I've got it tied onto the back of the shank, and I've just put a little super glue on there just to hold it. And I've put just a little bit of, for the dubbing, we're going to use Senyu's laser dub and all I'm going to do with this is I'm just going to dub a ball okay and actually that's about as big as I want it right there so let me take this off and I, I'm honestly I don't really care what it looks like because when this is all said and done you're not going to see it anyway and all this does it's a support for the marabou that we're going to tie on. So this particular one is going to be chartreuse and white. So I've got some extra select marabou here from a nature spirit and basically what I'm looking for I'm looking for, oh this is cool that we don't have to worry about the green screen now. Um, oh yeah. yeah, I didn't have to turn anything off, you can just keep tying. What I'm looking for is I'm looking for these ones with these nice long barbules that are even, that they're not all cut up and, and, and they're, they're nice and straight. This, this is a good marabou feather for um, what we're going to do here sh shortly. So I've stripped all the fluff off the bottom and I, I think I'm going to strip a little bit more off of here. I just went through and, and just quick prepped a bunch of feathers before we hopped on here. So what we're going to do, okay, I'm going to pinch this by the tip. And as we work our way up this pattern, we're going to do bigger dubbing balls and we're going to do more marabou. So, so we want it to, to stand more at a 90 degree to the shank as we move up and we're going to build bulk into the pattern as we move forward. So this one here at the, at the back, I'm probably only going to use about a quarter inch of, uh, of material. Okay, so which is, and it doesn't look like a lot, so it's very easy to overdress this pattern. Okay, so I'm going to do a little bit more than that. And remember, this is a blended marabou technique, so whatever you use, it's going to be double. Okay, so there's there's my chartreuse. Okay, and this that I've preened that I've preened back is going to go on the fly and then this tip that, that I've wet and kind of stroked forward is what we're going to tie in with. So I'm just going to lay this down on my table. Now I'm going to get my white feather. I'm going to strip a little more off of it.
This is a super, super cool technique. I love tying with marabou. It's one of my favorite materials to tie with. Now, I, I will caution you, this, uh, this fly casts like a, a, a pair of wet cotton underwear, but in the water, the movement is, is just unbelievable. You don't even have to strip it, and all this marabou is constantly moving in the, in the little microcurrents in, in the water, and it's just a super, super cool pattern. So again, I'm going to do about a quarter inch of material, and then we're going to tie it in by the tip. So I'm going to take my yellow, and I'm going to lay it right on top of my chartreuse. Are you answering questions over there? I'm putting a pinned uh, oh, okay. comment You're... that says bear with us and share for So I've clipped the tips off, and now what we're going to do, we're just going to turn this around, and we're going to take these tips, and I'm just going to tie in. Anything that's on this shank, it does not matter what it looks like because you're not going to see it when we're done. Okay? Damn, I lost my hackle pliers already. There they are. Okay, so I'm going to get my hackle did, pliers. You didn't even use them yet. Yeah, I did. I used them. I was using them when I was tying those, uh, those Smurf stones earlier. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So now, I want to get both stems at the same time. Okay. Now, if you look, there's a little bit of bare space. I got a little bit of bare stem in between the, the shank of the hook and where the actual feather starts. That's very important because that helps you get this. It, it, it gets the wraps started um, the right way, and it allows the feather to lay right. If you went to wrap right with the, with the feather barbule, sometimes they'll have a tendency to roll on you. And you just you take a wrap, and you just stroke these back. And these wraps are, we're moving forward on the shank. It's very important to stroke them back in between each wrap. Okay, and when we get done, we're going to have a way cool blended kind of white and chartreuse <laughs> marabou. What? Patrick Robinson said Smurf stones. You said surf stones. <laughs> oh, no, well, it was it was your pattern. Yeah, it was. Did, did I say surf stones? No, I, I don't know. It was the Smurf stone for sure. Okay, so now we've wrapped up to where, and this is why it's important to, um, you want to start on a bare, bare stem and you want to finish on a bare, bare stem. So you want, it, it's important that you control the amount of uh, material that's on your feather because it makes it a lot easier to tie on and off. So now, with my auto bobbin, I'm right back in the game, and I'm going to wrap back, and I'm going to get a couple of good, three good tight wraps, three in front, three behind, and then I'll do three more, or three behind, three in front, three more behind, and then I'm going to come in here, and I'm going to clip this off, nice and even right on the shank of the hook. Now, Marabou gets a rap for being not durable and I think that is a bit of a bad rap. Um, the stem is not durable but the barbules because they're so light and kind of fluffy they, they really move out of the way and like I said this this fly was designed for chain pickerel which for those of you who have caught them and and we've caught northern pike on them um, I have not but people have caught musky on this pattern so it's it's a durable pattern. The most vulnerable spot on this thing is this stem right here that I've wrapped around the shank of the hook. So now what we're going to do, we're going to put just a little drop of zap -a gap on there. And I'm going to pull all of these back towards the back. And then I'm going to take my thread and I'm going to cover that entire stem up with thread. And I'm going to wrap it back right I can feel that dubbing ball under my fingers here, and I'm going to wrap it back just right so it's almost pinching it up against the dubbing ball. The dubbing ball on your tail you want very small because you don't want it to flare out a lot, but you don't want it to, to like mat together and, and stay as, as kind of one piece. Okay, so that's going to be our tail. Now we're going to come in here with... This is a dubbing brush. Um, we, I actually made this on our dubbing brush table before we started. 
If you want, you can use uh, EP, Sparkle Brush, and Pearl. This is just um, Pearl um, Angel Hair. All right, and it does have a metal core on it. What, you couldn't find Sparkle Brush? Uh, I could not find the Pearl color. It's in the Junior Snot Rocket pack. Oh, okay, well, whatever. <laughs> All right. The one I asked if you wanted me to get it earlier, and you said no. <laughs> well, see, if you have the Norvice Dubbing Brush table, you can make your own. All right, and now... We're making flies, we're not making Christmas trees, all right? And there's going to be a lot of material on this thing. So we're going to do one, two, and that's it. We're going to do two wraps. And that's that's a cool feature, the locking mechanism of the of the vise. It will um, it'll help you count your wraps so you don't overdress this dude. Now we want to pick out the stuff that stays on the fly, stays on the fly. And the stuff that stays on the brush stays on the brush. Okay, so now I'll come here with my auto bobbin and I'll catch that brush. And remember, this is a metal core. So I am really going to put some wraps on there. Got to kind of catch it at first to make sure you got it. And then you can, can really lay some stuff down here. Now, I'm going to come in, do not use your scissors on this if it's a wire core, and I'm just going to clip that off, okay? Now, that little tab there, you may as well be tying on a razor blade. Make sure you push that down with your thumbnail, okay? Come in here with your bodkin and pick this stuff out. This is super, super light, super, super wispy, and then we're going to cover that up. Time to figure this out on this pattern. Depending on how we're doing with time, it looks like we're probably, did it just drop? We're back in. All right, it looks like we're probably going to do a two-stage one because I got two patterns that I want to get to. But what most people do, and what I did for a long time, is you'll tie one station on at the rear of the hook, and then you'll tie one station on at the front of the hook. And then when you put your shank on, then you tie a station on at the rear of the shank, a station on at the front. You can't do that because you're going to get gaps in the pattern, and the taper's not going to look right. So where this one ends, forget about the joints. I don't care where the joints are. You treat the whole the shank, the hook, and if you're doing a three-stage the other shank, treat it all as one straight line, and you want to put one collar every three-quarters of an inch, okay? So your finger is roughly one inch, okay? So you want to go three-quarters of that, which is about from your tying point, okay? So your next collar is going to be right here. So you can see it's not quite up to the to the eye of the hook. It's going to be right here. Then your next collar, whether we're doing a hook or a shank, is going to be three quarters of an inch from here, so it may be a little bit off the bend of the hook. But if you go three quarters of an inch, that's going to give you, it's going to give you a nice taper, and it's going to give you a nice full looking fly without having any gaps in it. So we're going to go right, right there. Okay, so now I'm going to get my dubbing. And, again, I'm going to put another dubbing ball on, and I am dubbing this the conventional way because I'm really not, when you're doing dubbing balls, you're really not putting a lot of dubbing on. I have a tendency to, even when I'm doing this, to put too much on. But that's about all you need. And then we're just going to wrap this right. We're not really moving up and down the shank of the hook. We're just wrapping kind of in place and kind of on top of one another. Okay, and you can see that ball, I'm actually going to make that a little bit bigger. So as you go up the shank of the hook, your dubbing ball gets bigger, and the amount of material in your feather becomes more. Remember, we did a quarter inch. Now we're going to do a half inch, and you just keep stepping it up. Okay, so there's our second dubbing ball. Okay, so once again, and you're just you're just repeating the same step as you work your way up the fly. So here's, I think I did the chartreuse feather first. So we'll do that one's a little 
Oh, no, that'll work. That one's a little skimpy. That one'll work. That's what we're looking for. Okay, so I'm going to do a little bit more. We did a quarter inch. This one I want to do about a half. And again, I'm using my finger as, as a measurement tool. Adult's finger, first finger joint is roughly about an inch. Not exactly, but it's close. Close enough for what we're doing here. Cut some of that stem out. This is a killer, killer pattern for um, largemouth bass. We'll absolutely crush this thing. Um, stripers, a variety of different bait fish, bunker, blueback herring, shad, anything that'll eat a bait fish will eat this pattern for sure. No questions? main thing with this is use good marabou. It is, if you use crappy marabou, your pattern is not going to look good when you're done. I don't care if you do everything right. Make sure you get, like I said, this is from um, Nature Spirit. They have some of the best marabou out there. It's their, it's their extra select. Extra select, I believe, is what they call it. Oh, I think that's their spay marabou. Is it their spay? Here, let me look. It's it is... Fish hunter spay marabou, you're correct. Yep. Yeah, this this stuff is fantastic. I normally am. Okay. Nothing new, smart comment. Nope. All right, so we're gonna tie that on. Okay, and then remember, we left that little bit of, of bare stem between the, the shank of the hook and the um and the where, where the feather barbie will start, and that's that's to help us get the um get the thing started right so it doesn't roll. And I'm going to grab my hackle pliers. I'm going to grab both stems at the same time. And then we're going to start wrapping. And I'm going to start right up against the dubbing ball. And then we're going to wrap forward. And you just kind of just kind of stroke these back. It's important that you're wrapping forward. It's it's hard to see because there's so much there's so much stuff going on here. But you don't you want to wrap forward and you want to make sure that you're not trapping any of the fibers from the previous wrap in in your next wrap and if you do you just stop and you come in with your bodkin and you pick them out this is not um, this is not a speed fly for sure but you're also not losing a bunch of them either because you're typically I mean we're throwing this on usually usually an eight weight with and and these these fish do have teeth and they will bite you off so we'll have a, a 40 to maybe 60 pound fluoro um, shock uh, tippet on and then our our class tippet is is probably 20 pound so and if you do hang one we're typically fishing out of a boat so you can you can kind of maneuver the boat over and if you're in a log or in a tree or whatever which will happen um, you can usually get it off so while they do take a lot of time to tie you're not losing a bunch of them so all right so I've got that feather wrapped now I'm going to come in Shannon Messer asks what are the best color combinations we um my my favorite my absolute favorite for pickerel is black and chartreuse and it, it, it would be this same pattern but instead of the white, it would be black. And I don't know why that is. Um, I've had like two or three banner days chasing chain pickerel with black and chartreuse. And that's probably why it's my favorite. But they, they just seem to um, to react to it. Our buddy downstate, um, Sean Rakes, is the one who really got us turned on to fishing for these fish. And his favorite, and if you look at the post that I put up earlier, there's one that I call um, Sweet Potato Pie. And it's orange and black. And that is is by far his favorite. So, I, I like pink and white. Yeah, pink and white. 
is white or orange and white. Yeah, pink and white is is one of Tyler's favorite colors. Um, Ed, I know he's watching. He he fishes a lot of orange and white. So it it seems to be th these these are. I I don't know that they're necessarily feeding strikes. I think they're. Well, I don't think I know. They're more reactionary strikes because when they strike, dude, it is game on. I mean, these fish are not playing. That that's why they're they're so much fun. And like I said, you don't you don't get the size that you're going to get out of a northern or out of a musky, but you you can at least in our area um, go and and land. Um, I think we've landed the most is is like thirty five in a day. So it's um, wasn't that one of the tournaments. Um, yeah, that was a tournament. They, they did a pickerel tournament. And, Michael and, Collier commented saying that we have tournaments for them. Yeah, That's yeah. Asked. Yeah, yeah they, the, the club downstate, the Saltwater Club, has a tournament, um, the, the pickerel tournament. And we haven't fished it for a couple of years, and I want to get down there and fish it again because it is, it is fun. But I think Ed and I, we took second one year, and I forget how many total... Um, inches that and that's what they go by is is total inches of fish but it was it was a lot and and that particular um tournament was i want to say in march i think so march or April. and that's yeah. another good thing about these fish is you can you can catch them in in the summer and and we will th there'll be a large uh by catch a pickerel when we're when we're you know throwing poppers and stuff around lily pads for largemouth but they, they really thrive in the cold water. So November, December, January, February, if, if, we, don't, if we don't get ice on the ponds, you, you can go. My best day ever fishing for pickerel was in February. And it was uh, like early February. One of those, you know, those warm days that you get where it pops up to like 40 degrees when it's been cold for several days in a row. And that's Ed and I were down. And, and I mean, we just we hammered them that day and it was it was a great day and that was on uh chartreuse and black so kind of a long-winded answer to your question but yeah i like chartreuse and black okay so now all right we got a guy that uh james hill said he just uh, logged on what size is that that's just a, it's just going to be a tail this is just going to be a tail it is the the, the hook that i'm using it's a Mustad 34011 size one knot. That's what I'm using, but it doesn't matter because I'm going to clip the um, we're going to clip the actual hook off of the the back of this. So, and then Shannon asked, will you use a black dubbing brush on the black flies? Yeah, yeah. Typically, the the um, no, 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 no. For the sparkle, um, I used to I used to change the color of of the dubbing brush to whatever. Um, the the color of the fly was and now I use this pearl brush and that that pearl um, DNA mm -hmm. material is kind of cool because it takes on the um, kind of the color of, of the material that's around it so if here it's it looks kind of white and chartreuse if I were to put it on a black fly it would look kind of black so yeah I, I use the the pearl on um, on every one. Okay. And now we'll come in here on the head of the fly. We're going to come in with a little solar as bone dry. Remember these are these are toothy fish, so you want you want your flies to be durable, so you want to you want to glue Hopefully that doesn't blow the camera out. Looks, looks, it looks crazy on the screen mm -hmm. now. Okay, and then we'll just, typically I'll lay this down and I'll show this to you when I get done and I hold it by the eye of the hook and I brush this back. Brush it back on both sides. And there you can see, you can see how the taper is starting to form. So I'm going to go in here real quick right now, and I'm going to cut this hook off so I don't forget it. I'm going to come right, I don't know if you can see that, 
there's the dubbing ball, the first one that I put on. And remember, I super glued underneath that, so I'm going to come right to the end of that dubbing ball. Should wear safety glasses. I'm going to cover this with my hand and <clears throat> there's the point of my hook, which goes in the wastebasket. And this is going to be, this is the tail of my fly. What are you looking for back there? My fly. It's right here. I didn't know you pulled it out. I showed it. I already oh, showed well, the people well, your fly. You didn't hear me say this was the fly that Tyler caught his big northern on a couple of no, years ago. I, I, I heard you say it. I thought it was when you were tying it. I'm... While fishing with Steelhead Alley Outfitters. All right, so there's our tail. Where are we at on time? Uh, 32 minutes in. All right, I'm going to do a two-stage. Yeah. We tie for an hour and a half. We tie for an hour and a half. All right, so this is going to be our hook. This is a Gamagatsu B10S. This is my still, to this day, my absolute favorite big fly streamer hook. I do like the Eric's hooks. The TP610. The TP610s are great, great hooks. We're tying a lot of stuff on them. They're a lot thinner wire, though. Um, I like these B10Ss. I just, I, I like the B10S. So we're going to tie on. Mid shank, and we're going to lay some thread down back to this B10S has kind of this this double drop, so it's got like a bend here and then a more exaggerated bend at the bottom. I like this for articulated flies because this little double drop bend gives you a good platform to bring your um, to bring the shank of your of your fly in. This is a non what I call a non load bearing connection meaning there's no hook on the back so I'm just using this is uh, 40 pound just mono just cheap mono that you can get at like Cabela's it's Berkeley big game yeah th this is there's no reason to break the bank on this connection because it's not going to do anything it's just a hinge okay so I've got my my mono through the um, through the eye of the hook and I formed the loop and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the both strands, and I'm actually going to cut this off a little shorter. I don't need that much. All right, well, I've got it dropping less, and it reconnects sooner. So okay, that's I'm making good. making progress in the right direction. How many times has it dropped? Uh, about three. All right. For about anywhere between about three to eight seconds. So like I said, guys, this is new software that we're working with. There's a reason that we're doing it, and you're going to see it here. Some of the options that it gives us to do on the next fly, you're going to see it. So we don't just, have to use a green screen. Yeah, we don't have, have to use the green screen. There, right? Yep. All right. So when you're doing your connection, I've I've got the um, I've got the 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 mono on, and I've got a couple of of loose wraps on it. It's it's not tight, and I can I can manipulate this in and out. This is why I like this hook because I can pull this, I can pull this eye almost right up against the shank of the hook, and and you can see everything is in line. Okay. So now. I'm going to put, just kind of work this thread up a little bit, and I'm going to lift these butt ends up, and I'm going to clip them off. Okay, now I'm going to wrap them down. I'm going to work my way back, okay, and I'm going to bring this down this bend just a little bit. You said that was a 2 aught. This is a 2 aught, yes. And you can see that what that allows this to do you can see this shank if you can visualize it through all the feathers is right in line with the shank of the hook and that will make it swim properly and that way you can go down that bend just a little bit and kind of just kind of cock that loop down and that that gets you perfectly in line now I'm going to take my hair clip I'm going to put it on there and it is a non-load bearing but I'm still going to glue it on Okay, and then we're going to spin the vise and we're going to lay some thread down. And at this point, that thing is going nowhere. Okay, so remember, three quarters of an inch, right? So we want to go three quarters of an inch up about right 
there. So I'm going to do one here, and then I'm going to do one up here at the front. So that gives me, you can see how if you work that out, it's going to give me one here, and then I'm going to have one right up here at the eye, and then we're going to put the head on. Okay, so again, a little bit of green sinews laser dub. And as we move forward, the dubbing balls get bigger, and we put more material. We use more feather for each collar. Yeah, I think when it's dropping, we're losing people. I think we are, too. So, again, this is sponsored tonight by Tuck's Fly Shop, Tuck CG Fly Shop, down in uh, Bryson City and Silva, North Carolina. Share early, share often. They're um, going to provide for every 50 shares. Uh, we're going to draw names, and somebody's going to win a 10-pack of Norvice spools. I don't know where we are at shares yet. Um, but it's a quick way to pick up a, a nice little gift from our sponsor. Let me work on that there just a little bit. We're at 101 shares. 101 shares, there you go. Apparently people want um, want some spools. Okay, so... So we did a quarter inch, we did a half inch on the next collar. We're going to do three quarters on this one. And I'm going to clip that stem. And that's what I'm looking for there. That's three quarters of an inch. And I'm stroking, I'm stroking back what I'm going to use on the fly. And I'm stroking forward the tips that I'm going to use to tie them in with. And I'll get a white one. Like I said, when we're putting all this material on, you can imagine this thing. It it is um, it is not the prettiest casting fly in the world. But then again, is there any predator fly that's really a pretty casting fly? But in the water, this thing moves like crazy. And if you tie this marabou in the way I'm showing you, and you cover that stem up after you wrap it, you will be surprised to the point of being shocked of how durable this fly is. And, and I have flies in my box that we've caught, you know, I'm, I'm probably 50, 50 pickerel on. And, yeah, they're, they're beat up, and, and, yeah, you can tell that they've been fished, but... I mean, they're far, far from being being ready to be retired. So, like you said, mine caught that big northern pike, and you can you can barely tell it's been fished. It's dirty. Uh, yeah, but it's all white too. So, all right. So we're gonna tie in by the tip. I got marabou in my mouth. Okay, remember, leave that little bit of of bare stem in between the. Um, the, the shank of the uh, the hook and and where the feathers start that that's very important to get this thing to um, to wrap right it's not it's not totally necessary but it will make your life a lot easier trust me okay now I'm going to get both stems and again you're just you're repeating the same steps moving forward as we do with with most streamers and most predator flies but you're just adding like I said a bigger dubbing ball and more material to bulk up the front of the fly. So now I've got my tension nut engaged a little bit. I don't want this to free spin. I want to be able to take my hand off and and kind of have the vise stay where I where I leave it. And we'll just stroke these back. And you can see after this collar, this fly is really going to take shape. And I'll bet there were some people out there that after the first collar, they're like, oh, it's nowhere near enough material in this and that. Trust me, if you use those measurements, a quarter, a half, three quarter, and then we'll do one inch of material here at the front collar. If you use those, this thing will, when you, by the time you get all said and done, it's going to look right. Okay. 
that looks good so I'm on the bare stem which you can see right here so I'll stroke this back and then I'm just kind of taking my finger and I'm putting it here and just holding those two stems there till I can get my auto bobbin back in the game oh I just hit the camera and then I'll come and I'll get a couple of really good wraps up underneath and I'll pull that tight up onto the shank of the hook put about five or six really good tight wraps on there okay then I'll come around with my fine point scissors and I'll clip this out okay now this is important before you wrap back on those stems to build the strength in make sure that you pick this out and you brush these back because if they're if they're not distributed around the shank of the hook properly when you wrap back on the stems however they are when you wrap back that's how they're going to stay so make sure you pick these out if you have any fibers that are trapped get in there and um, and pluck them out that's why I like using a toothbrush for this brush them back and then you're going to take and you're going to cover those stems up and you're going to wrap this back right I can feel that dubbing ball underneath my fingers and I want to wrap it right back to the front of that ball I'll come in here put a little just a little dab of glue on since she's back again and there you go believe it or not that is unbelievably durable right now and like I said don't worry about what the shank looks like because you're not going to see it when it's all said and done now I got my sparkle brush couple good wraps there watch that that wire that yeah that wire is literally like tying on a razor blade I'm gonna stroke these back and we're gonna go there's one full wrap and then as, as I get to the front we'll go one there's two and then I'll put a third one on there's three okay now come in here with our bodkin and we'll separate what's supposed to be on the fly versus what stays on the brush okay come back in auto bobbin I'm right back in a couple good tight wraps on there you can let this go and I can come underneath uh oh hey Tyler yeah run upstairs and get some batteries Capturing audio. Yeah, it's flashing on me down here. Yeah. Okay, now I'm going to come in with my wire cutters and I'm going to just cut that brush right flush to the shank. I'm take my finger, my thumbnail, I'm going to punch that down. Now, before I wrap back, I'm going to come in here and you can see it looks like a matted up mess, but if you come in here with your bodkin and you just pick it out, and brush it back it's a super cool way to add a little bit of flash you're not adding a ton a ton of bulk to the pattern and it really really just adds to the look and the the function of the fly now watch that cut off end that will cut your thread okay All right, now you can see this thing really taking shape. All right, so we're going to go silent here for a second. Tyler's changing. No, I switched to the other microphone. Oh, okay. So, so it, it may sound a little different. Just give us a second. We've got to switch uh, batteries in the microphone here. So now my last collar, I'm going to go, again, using my finger, I'm going to go three quarters of an inch. And three quarters of an inch puts me right at the eye of the hook. I want to leave a little bit of space up there because I want to put a um, we're going to put a head on this. So I, my dubbing ball for this last collar is going to wind up right here. Okay, so let me just do a little bit. There you go. Everything's normal. 
Okay, everything's normal. So this Apparently is Apparently it still sounded good before. So Okay. This thing's got a lot better microphone than yeah. the laptop. Did. So we got we got a new computer down here, we got new software, we got new everything. So like I said, just bear with us. All right. So now is our last station here. Nope, too much. This this will be the biggest. This would be a good point if, if you wanted to put a little red in the pattern right here behind what's going to be the, the head section of the fly. You could do this dubbing ball out of red. It'd be pretty cool. Um, I'm just going to stick with the chartreuse for now, but this would be a good good time to put some red in the pattern if you wanted to. And we're going to work. You can fill up that whole gap in between the sections in red if you wanted to do If you wanted like to, yeah. Yeah. And there you go. That is obviously the biggest dubbing ball that we've done so far. Okay. So we did we did a quarter, a half, three quarter, and now we're going to do one inch of material. So you see how we're adding the dubbing ball gets bigger and we add more material as we move up the um, the head of the fly, or up to the head of the fly, I should say. So one inch, I'm going to use the entire the, the entire length of the joint of my finger. And when you tie these, I, I will guarantee you you're going to overdress them, especially down at the tail section. And they'll fish, and they're fine. They, they're not going to they're not going to have a great looking taper to them, but they will um, they will definitely fish. But just stick with that quarter, half, three quarter, and then one inch. Okay, a little bit, a little bit more. Okay, and I'll get my last white one. I like this chartreuse and white, it's a cool looking fly. This one might have to find its way into my personal northern pike box for our trip this May. Have we ever tried that in salt water? It looks like bluefish and Spanish mackerel would kill that. Caught a bunch of stripers on it. Yeah, I, I'm. I'm. Uh, I'll, I'll be honest with you. I'm not. I'm not all too fired up crazy about a blue dog gnawing on this fly that takes me like an hour to tie. So, B bluefish get chewed up clousers and stuff like that. <laughs> But yeah, they would absolutely, they would hammer it. Anything that, anything that's going to eat a bait fish is going to eat this fly. Now, as I've said, this was designed for chain pickerel. We've used it for northern pike. It's been used for musky, not by me. Okay, you're not casting a great, great distance when you're fishing for these particular fish. So keep that in mind. This this fly literally casts like a wet sock, so you've got to know that going in. Eight weight, nine weight. Yeah, well, typically we'll throw this on an eight weight with a uh, with an intermediate line and get them wet first. Actually, if you know you're going to be fishing them the night before, soak them in a bucket the night before. Make sure all the marabou's wet. Because if not, they will have a tendency to ride up on the top. Okay, and we're going to do the same thing every wrap. We're just going to stroke these back and make sure that we're not trapping anything underneath. Okay, I got, hold on, I got, under, I got something going on with this chartreuse feather here. Hold on a second. It can, marabou can be challenging to work with, but if, if you do it enough, it actually, um, it's, it's a great material. It's a great material to work with. And one thing I like about it, you can go to any fly shop anywhere in the world 
and they're going to have marabou now they may not have extra select spay marabou you know but they're going to have some marabou for sure and it's inexpensive it comes in every color in the rainbow so it's a very very versatile material and oh I just did it again hold on bear with me first fly of the new year kind of reach in here if you need to like I said get your bodkin pick these feathers out you don't want anything trapped when you go to take your next wrap just keep pulling them back and give it a wrap take your time Thing. keep everything coming back I need to get a little more stem exposed there there we go get one more half wrap okay ow you bastard <laughs> you can't say that well it's kind of <laughs> our microphones are too I know it kind of scared that. me point scissors and I'm going to get them stems get the stems cut out of there all right now remember before you before you wrap back you want to pick all this out if you have it and it's all kind of like matted up to one side when you wrap back over top of them it's going to do the same thing so you got to you got to get this picked out and get everything Get everything facing to the back, kind of brushed out the way that you want it, and then pull it back, and I'm just going to wrap right over top of those stems, right back to that dubbing ball. Now, hopefully you can see where this thing's taking shape. I need to get... That white one had a had a fat, or the chartreuse one had a fat stem on it. And you can see that's what I was fighting when I was wrapping it. And you can see how that, that blends that color. And you got that chartreuse and white, or black and white, or black and chartreuse, or whatever. Whatever you're using. And it's just a super, super cool pattern. Alright, now for the head we're going to take on the top we're going to do chartreuse laser dub we're going to do a stacked laser dub head okay so you've seen us do this before where we take the we pull a, a, a pretty good size hank out of the pack and then we we just kind of pull it from the middle or pull it from the edges and then put it back together in the middle and what we're doing we're lining all these fibers up so that we can stack it Okay, that looks about good. I'm going to put chartreuse on the top. And we're going to come in here, right here at about midway. And I'm going to do one wrap. And I want to make sure that the chartreuse, I want it 180 degrees distributed around the shank on the top. I'm getting texts about your slip up. Which one? Oh, the... <laughs> sorry and on the bottom we're going to do white because it's chartreuse and white remember bait fish typically are darker on the top and lighter on the bottom so your two colors you want your lighter of the two on the bottom if you're using two colors that are similar like chartreuse and pink take your pick 
but generally if you have a white or a gray or something like that you want that on the bottom because all of our bait fish are lighter on the bottom than they are on the top put one loose wrap and then I'll kind of take my thumb and I'll push that on and that will kind of distribute it so I want 180 degrees on the I'll take the chartreuse and I'll fold it back and then I will pull all of that back good and tight and I'll build a little thread dam up right here at the eye and we will whip finish and even when I'm whip finishing I'll pull this back cut this off right here okay and we'll take our toothbrush here and we'll brush this all back sometimes you can brush it forward give it a bad hair day and then brush it back don't stab your hook especially with your finger because you'll say bad words and then you'll get text from Virginia I know it was for sure. I know exactly who it was. <laughs> All right. One last step, and this baby is ready for a swim. A little Loctite Super Gel. Okay, right up here by the eye of the hook, I'm going to put a... Did you cut this? It's been punctured, yeah. Put a little it's a brand new. Is it coming out yet? No. Here we see something. Did you get it? I can use this other stuff. Is it not coming? No, it's not coming. All right, here, I'll use this. Normally, I would use Loctite. That's a brand new Loctite, but we'll put a big dab of, uh, of Zapid Gap on here, right, just right behind the eyes, and I'm using the 90-degree locking feature of the vise, so I know that the, the eyes are on 90 degrees apart. Okay, and we'll put one eye on, and I'm just going to push that down on there like so. Now what do you got? Well, a bunch of it started coming out at one time. <laughs> I guess it built up some pressure. We're there. like a couple of freaking clowns here. <laughs> there we go. There's text yeah. about it. Text about it again. <laughs> Have your stuff ready before you It was tied. ready. We used it right before we tied. Okay, and then I'm going to put another. <laughs> you don't even need it. I got super glue everywhere. There it goes. Mm -hmm. Now I'm getting yelled at saying, oh my God, stop it. Well, I'm trying to stop the super glue. It ain't working. It's all fun. Paper towel just stuck to me. There are no mistakes, just happy accidents, right, Shannon? All right, so there's that. <laughs> What'd she say? Please stop saying no, it's not coming. Oh my God, stop it. Ow. <laughs> All right, so now we got a little, we're going to do a little solar res. This is the thin hard, and I'm going to go right around our, right around the eye of the hook, and then up on the front part of the eyes, and a little bit on the, on the head, just to help it keep its shape in the water. Okay. And we'll hit it with the torch, spin it, and there you go. There is O'Neill's Snot Rocket. That's a single staged. Let me get it brushed out here, and you'll be able to see the taper on this dude. This is a super, super cool. What?
I'm shocked you did the eyes like that. I fully... Five inches long. Um, you can see how the material wasn't really tapered, but by using the... Here, the hold it away from the camera. Hold it it's away. It's too big to... Okay, so I'll yeah. hold it up to this one. And so... Actually down a little, like, and on the other... Yeah, here? pretty good. No, as close, out, far out as you can reach to this camera. Okay. There you go. So there you go. So you can see the taper. Um, the, the, the material wasn't really tapered. We built the taper in by using the different size dubbing balls and by by um, bulking it up as we move to the front of the fly. So that's a single stage snot rocket. There were four collars in that. A triple stage would have six collars in it. You would do the same thing. You just keep working your way up um, forward on the um, on the hook. If this was a triple stage, we would have tied everything exactly the same. Then I would have clipped a heavy duty um, big game musky shank to the eye of the hook and we would have finished the fly in the same manner, but we would have put two more collars on it. Uh, the people asking if we could put a rattle in this fly. You could put a rattle in the fly, yeah. Um, and if you think it'll make a difference. I In the th water I was fishing in last Sunday, it probably would have made a difference. Th it, it definitely wouldn't hurt. We're, we're putting, actually in the fly number two, we're going to put a rattle in it. Um, it. It wouldn't hurt. I will say this, if I was putting a rattle in it, I would seriously consider switching hooks to the... Um, to the, uh, the the TP610. It's got it, a little bit of a longer shank on it, and um, it, it would give you a little bit more room for the for the rattle. Put it in the middle in between the mm -hmm. two collars. Yep. Yep. That's right where I would do it. Yep, yep, yep. So, there you go. That's O'Neill Snot Rocket. Alright, so any questions on that? Uh, Sean's chiming in saying this fly is a huge profile and will invite attacks from pickerel that are the same size as that to a two foot. Thing. Oh, no doubt, no doubt. We've caught pickerel. The pickerel are a lot like smallmouth. They'll hit a fly that's two thirds or as big as they are, and then you look at them and it's like, you know, if this was a real fish and you'd have got it in your mouth, like, what would you have done? But that's why we love them. So, okay. I don't know where we are with shares. Um, Tuck CG Fly Shop is our sponsor. Remember, they've got two locations down in uh, North Carolina, one in Silva, one in um, Bryson City, 828-488-3333. I got it. All right. All right, so speaking of Tuck's Fly Shop, um, we are doing a promotion down there in February. It's called Norvice Boot Camp, and we talked a little bit about it. You've probably seen it on social media. Um, we are going down to uh, North Carolina in February. We have a hotel booked. Um, Tuck's Fly Shop has a hotel booked. Um, it's called the, the the Best Western River Escape. So it's right on the uh, the river. I'm not sure which river it is. Um, beautiful place. Uh, you're going to get a Norvice tying system. You're going to get your lodging. You're going to get all of your food and an intense amount of instruction. Um, it's going to be over the course of... Three days, uh, the 19th, 20th, and 21st. Uh, the 19th is a Friday. We're going to do a dinner and a kind of meet and greet thing. And then we're going to tie on the, um, maybe a little bit on Friday, and then a lot on Saturday, maybe a little bit Sunday morning. So it is limited to six spots. There is one spot left. This thing sold out way faster than, than we thought that it would. Um, so there's, there's one spot left, and when it's gone, it's gone. Call the boys at Tuck's Fly Shop tomorrow. Um, if you call the Silva location, ask to speak to Shannon, he can definitely help you out. I think he's on here tonight, um, and he can get you booked up. One spot left, guys, so if you want to take advantage of it, you better get on it, okay? All right, fly number two. This is a new fly for us. It's one, it's actually, it's actually one of Tyler's flies that he's been working on, and we were down... With, uh, with the Millers over Christmas, and he and Braden worked on a few things, and they're kind of getting it worked out, and I did a couple practice ties today, and I'm already changing some stuff on it. So we're going to use this new, um, it's the, the Eric's PR378GB Predator Swim Bait. So GB stands for Gunner Brammer. So if you guys know who this kid is, he is a fantastic tire. In um, he's in the Midwest. I think he's up in Michigan, isn't he? Michigan, Illinois, something uh, like that. He's further than that. He's like Wisconsin. Oh, uh, Wisconsin. Something. Okay. Yeah. And he he ties some fantastic predator patterns. And this is a hook that that he and um, Eric's has been working on. It's a special shaped hook. And as soon as I saw it, I was like, oh, that's awesome because I have 
three patterns right now that will fit into this hook perfectly. Now, this is the two aught. This is the smallest one that they make right now. It goes up to a six aught. So I'm hoping that they get them down to like a one aught or a size one for some of the patterns yeah, that I want to use. Skipping a size, so if they do a yeah. size one, that's yeah, good. size one will be killer for some of our small mount stuff. Two dozen different flies on that hook. But we're going to tie up a uh, a fly. And, and we don't have the name totally worked out yet. Tyler has been working on it. Braden's been working on it. Um, I think we're going to call it the Tattletail. Um, but time will tell. But we'll show you how to tie it tonight. All right. Uh, should I show our new feature? Yeah. Here, here's, here's part of the reason why we're switching um, software. So this is one of the prototypes of this fly in the water that you're looking at right now. And I'll let that loop run through a couple times. Yeah. That I was Christmas... Day. That was Christmas Day, was, yeah. Braden and I went out and tested this Christmas Day. So it, there's a little bit of a delay. I'm seeing, hey, it's showing up. It's showing on mine, yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, yep. cool. And you can see this. We're, we're tying this with uh, Cohen's paddle tail. And like right there, you can see now they're kind of pulling it up out of the water. But you can see when it's under the water how that thing is really working. So, so all right. Cool stuff. Go to the close-up camera. All right, so the first thing that we're going to do, <laughs> what? You call Gunner a kid, Braden is on here, and Casey saying he's almost 30 years old. He's 29. Okay, well, I'm 50, so he's a kid to me. I didn't realize he was that old. Oh, uh, I got a text from Braden oh. yelling at, saying Gunner is... Sorry. Well, you call me a kid. Well, you're, I'll be you're 27 a kid. in a month. All right, so this is one of the things that I've changed. So, Braden, if you're watching, check this out. All right, so I got a, uh, it's a 100 pound um, hard mono. And I'm going to tie right on to the 100 pound. And you can do this with hard mono if you keep it up against the jaws. I'm going to clip that off. Now, this is, this is one of Cohen's, um, this is a, three and three quarter inch it's a Cohen um, swim tail okay I'm going to take that I'm going to lay it right on top of that mono and I'm going to tie it in better put the hook up there and measure that hold on a second I'm going to tie it in further back. Okay, I'm going to lay that right on the side of the mono. And I'm going to, I want it right on the side, so I'm going to put a couple loose wraps on there. And then I'm going to, going to keep working this. I want it to stay on the side. I don't want it to roll around to the bottom. Is that Braden text? You go, what's he doing? No. Oh, Snapchat. Okay. Now. Oh, now I'm getting a text from Braden. The button, the little dots just popped up. Oh. Interesting. Dot yeah, ha, ha, ha. stick with me, son. I'll <laughs> learn you. All right. So now what we're going to do, just to cover up, this crappy little tie-in spot. Just going to take, actually I want to glue that first. Uh, I would not recommend trying the Loctite. <laughs> <laughs> You'll get yelled at. Okay. A little glue on there, a little wrap. Remember, these are big nasty predator flies. Okay. And we're just going to I'm not even 100% sure that you need this, but it does look cool, so we'll put it on there. And all I'm doing, I'm just going to cover up that tying spot with just a little bit of red laser dub. Like I said, I don't, not 100% sure that you need it, but it's there. If you want it. Now, I 
that's all we're going to do for this step. We'll come in here. And I'm going to whip finish it. And we're going to clip this off. And because it's a predator fly, put a little bit of bone dry on there. And we're going to hit it with the torch. That stuff actually smokes when you hit it with the torch. You can see smoke coming off of it. That's pretty cool. Okay, so now I'm going to use my hook to measure. And where I want to clip this. And we're going to use this to stop it from fouling. So I want... I want the mono to extend about halfway between this bend of the hook and the inside bend, maybe a little bit further than halfway. So I want to clip it about right there. You guys come in and say, burn your eyes too. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now measure this up and I'm going to poke a hole right through here which is risky you got to make sure you're dead center got to be dead center and this is a hundred pound mono so it's damn near the thickness of the um we'll put a little drop of solar we'll resin put a little on drop of solar resin on there like so, just put a little ball, and I can use, see that, look at that, I can use the vise to kind of get that thing to go where we want it to go, and when we get it where we want it, boom, we hit it with the torch. You can see the smoke coming off. Uh-huh, oh. and now, okay, now that won't pull off, or it won't pull out, okay. And that is going to be our tail. Okay. So now we're going to put this monstrosity in you here. You could also just take a torch and hit the end of the mono and do the little mono. You could. Thing yeah, you could. You could yeah. melt it with a uh, with a lighter, lighter and just, just let it ball up. And um, and um, that, that would hold it on as well. So now we're going to swap out the fine point jaw. We're going to go back to our large jaw. And we're going to get this monstrosity in the jaw. Now remember, the top of our jaws sets our zero axis, so you want to project this out. So you want this to be in line and even with the top of the jaw. And level. And if I did that right... Pretty close. Okay, now, because my mama did not raise a fool, and I said bad words the last time, we're going to do that. Okay. Now, we are going to put a rattle in this one. And this is a super cool trick that Braden showed us, or actually showed Tyler down um, at Christmas time. So this is my rattle. It's five, five millimeter glass rattle. I said, can you try smaller dry flies? Sean Mayer said dry flies for trout. <laughs> <laughs> Braden is tying next week, so here you go. Drop him a line and tell him what you want to see. So what I've got here, this is a, um, it's it's just a, a, a rabbit strip. Brittany sent a size 32 Royal Wolf, yeah. please and thank you. <laughs> Parachute. So this is, this is just a, a um, Battle right here, right at the bottom of the fly. Okay, and I'm going to clip this off. Now, anybody who's ever put rattles in, you know how much of a struggle it can be to get a round rattle to sit properly on a round hook shank. So we're going to take this little piece of leather, and I'm going to lash it down loosely onto the shank of the hook. And then this will create 
a little kind of pillow, if you will, and it's also kind of kind of soft, and it will allow your rattle to kind of nest down, and it's 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 leather, so it's it's like got some grip to it, and it makes it a lot easier to get your rattle to stay on your fly. Now, where he got that from, I don't know. Braden, if you're, if you're on here, tell us where you learned that from or if it's yours. Because if this is your idea, I want you to get credit for it. But this is a super, super cool way to get a rattle on to your fly. Okay. Now I'm going to come under here. And I'm going to take a little bone dry. And I'm going to coat my wraps underneath. And I'm going to coat kind of the underside, the, the wraps and the underside of the rattle, kind of the, the junction of the leather piece and the, uh, and the shank of the hook and the rattle. And we're going to hit it with the torch. And now that rattle's not going anywhere. And I'll put a couple more wraps on here just to make sure. Now, what's cool about doing this this way is if for some reason your rattle breaks, and they will, they will break sometimes, you cast up against a rock, you get a big fish that chomps down too hard, um, and they break, you can, if you choose to, you can come back in here and tie another rattle on this fly later and it doesn't affect the rest of the pattern. So, uh, just got a question, would a foam strip, the same as used for foam bugs, work in place of the weather? It, it may, um, th this is a new technique to me, to be honest with you. It, the, the leather has like a, like a, a grip, to, it's a soft leather, so it has like a grip to it. I, I think a foam um, strip may, it may sl want to slide a little more. It's probably better than to mess up how the hook is riding. If you were just going to do it on the regular hook shank of a fly, I think it would be fine. All right, so we've got our rattle on. Now let me get my thread tied on here. Okay, so remember this thing. So now we're just going to put it on. Now you want you want the the red section. You want it to be back a little bit from the um, from this bend of the hook because the idea is. When the fish bite, this thing hinges down out of the way, and it doesn't um, intrude on your hook gap. But it is a hundred pound mono, so it's not it's not likely that it's going to break off. Okay, so I'm just going to put some loose wraps on here, and I'm going to come in here with my cutters, and I'm going to cut this off, and I'm going to come in with our zappa gap. Want to coat that not that it's a load bearing connection but you also you don't want it falling apart and then oh, oh hold on get my little hair clip on here that thing is going crazy and we're just going to lay some thread down on top of that connection now here's another thing that we've come up with And when when they were down testing this fly, Braden says, "Oh, we got to get some foam in the head. We got to get some foam in the head. This is going to be, we believe, a killer snakehead fly too. So, par for the course. The young kids couldn't figure it out, so I had to figure this out tonight. Yeah, when I'm the one that brought this up for your snakehead fly and forgot about it. So this is a little." It's a little popper head. They're called uh, teeny pops. Um, they're for peewee pops. That's what they're called. Rainies makes them. They're for they're for making little little poppers for bluegill and stuff. So basically, all I'm going to do, and I'm going to test fit it first, is we're going to run it on the hook, and run it all the way back. And there's our foam, and it also has a little bit of red in it. And apparently, I had enough super glue on there because it grabbed the hold of it. So that's a good thing. Okay, so Braden, there's your foam.
and it's red, which which I think uh, predators key on red. So now, last step here. This is actually a very very quick fly to tie. This is a brush from a company that's called Nightmare Musky Flies, and it's a two stage brush. It's got a long flash in it, and then it's got a, a bulkhead here at the front. Um, these things are killer, killer brushes. They're they're not cheap. I'll tell you that, but they're worth every penny of it. You can get yeah, they're multiple three to five flies per brush. Yeah, for sure. And there's, I mean, there's a ton of of different colors that you can get. This one just happens to be uh, pearl or, or or white. I I think is what he calls it. Um, perfect pearl or something like that. What's it called? Anyhow. We're just going to bring this baby home, so I'm going to tie this brush in right at the front of the where I put that foam on. Come up here to the eye. I'm going to do a half hitch. And we're looking for about three to five wraps of this stuff. Now, this, I, I will say this, this is a gnarly brush, and it is it can be challenging to work with. So you want to stroke everything back, and you want to give it a turn. And you want to stroke everything back again, and you're just going to keep stroking and keep turning and keep moving this thing forward. And like I said, this is a gnarly brush, so you really you got to watch what you're doing. Take your time. When it starts getting, uh, when it starts getting all, especially the 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 bulkhead portion of it, will get kind of matted up. Just just come in here and pick it all out. Do your best to not trap anything. Get these, you want to get these wraps tight against one another. And we'll put another one on. And we'll stroke it back. You moving the camera? Okay. Yeah, we got to, it's a weird hook for this camera. Yeah, it is. It's it's a long, it's a very long shanked hook. So, I'm getting close. I'm flirting with that hook eye. Okay. That's it. Braden said he threw this fly for stripers, and he tank tested his down there. Mm -hmm. And he said it got eaten hard, really there hard. There you go. It's driving him insane. There's, I, I'm, I, I'm not much on, on gimmicky stuff. And you know the the newest, latest, and greatest in in the world of fly tying and all that. I, I honestly I don't put a lot of stock into a lot of things that that come out. I, I will say this, and I was skeptical of it at first. This paddle tail, there is something about this paddle tail, and it's they can feel it. That it's it's got to be driving their lateral line crazy. Um, you but, want to tell the story about how you figured that out? Which one? The one where uh, me, you, and Sean went pickerel fishing? No, I don't want to tell that story. Uh, you, you don't want to tell the one where I outfished the two of you combined with yeah. one fly? No, I don't want to tell that ah, story. All right, just making sure. It was <laughs> it was a cold, wet, rainy day, but yeah. I caught a lot of fish. Yeah, there's there's definitely something about this. So I, I can't wait to get this this pattern in on some other species. Like I said, these these are great brushes, but there is a lot of material, especially here with the with the bulkhead part of it. So take your time. Okay, that looks about good to me. Auto bobbin, and I'm right back in, ready to tie. It's looking like a hot mess now, but bear with me. Get a lot of wraps on here because this there's a lot of material that you're lashing down. Okay. I want to get a couple in front. Okay, now I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna clip the brush off. Man, even that wire in that thing is tough. Now remember, you've got that, you've got that little end there that you've cut, and that thing, that will cut your thread just as soon as as you're tying on a razor blade. So make sure you bend that thing down. Okay. Now I'm going to come in here with my brush, 
and I'm going to brush it out. And you want, and I'll show you here, these, these longer fibers, they should come just to about the, the back part of the tail. If you get them much longer than that, we, we've noticed that the tail won't, um, it won't paddle the way that it's supposed to, for lack of a better term. Okay. I see a lot of hearts and a lot of thumbs ups and a lot of uh, things going across the screen. I guess we like it. Come in here with your bodkin and we'll dig that out. And you want to get all these, it gets a little, like I said, they get a little gnarly and they get a little knotted up. But, okay. Take it off, take your hook protector off, that's very important, you're going to have a rough day if you forget to leave that on, and there you go, and guys, that's it, that is the entire pattern, and this thing, I'm telling you, are we on the big camera or the little one? Uh, we're going to the big one. We're going to the big one, okay, so that's it, and that thing catches fish like nobody's business. Play that. Play the video again. Right, so that back to the video. that's what you're looking at right now. In the water, and you can see that little tail is just kicking a hundred miles an hour. And that that is this fly right here. A little bit different in the connection on the tail, and I don't believe that one had the foam in the head. And you have options. You can put the foam in the head. You can put lead on it. You can put nothing on it if if you wanted. You could just dub um, red laser dub on that thing if you wanted a, a more neutral fly. Um, this one's designed with a floating line to swim right underneath the surface. Right underneath the surface. We and want it in the top six inches of the water column. Yep, and we think this is going to be a killer snakehead fly. So, there you Grant, go. Grant's blowing my phone up, phone up right now. Oh, is he? There okay. He is. So, there's the tattletail. And there is the two-stage snot rocket. All right. All right, well, guys. We're done tying. I'm going to move that You're out You're going to move that out of the way? Okay. So, next week, um, we, we'll hang around here for, uh, for questions. One thing I do want to mention, um, our March Madness uh, tournament, we are finalizing some things with that. Um, if you're not on the mailing list, please get on the mailing list because we're, we're going to be sending out some information probably this week. We're looking for 64 Norvice tires. Um, we've got some serious um, backing with some major uh, companies in the industry. We're going to have some, some serious prize packs, and there's going to be prizes for everyone. It's not going to be for the best fly because we know that we have, you know, multiple uh, skill levels of, of people out there. So, um, you know, there, there's going to be equal opportunity for everybody to, uh, to win some prizes. But we're going to do the same thing, 64 head-to-head, -head, and we're going to pair it down to the two best tires for the championship round. Um, so we're going to have some information for that. If you're interested in a Norvice boot camp, um, please call Tux Fly Shop tomorrow, 828-488-3333. Uh, Talk to Shannon. Um, he'll be able to get you hooked up. We've got one spot left for the, uh, for the boot camp. So if you want that, get in on it. It's a heck of a deal. You're going to get a complete Norvice system. You're going to get your lodging for the entire weekend. You're going to get your food. We're bringing uh, catered food in. Um, and you're going to get instruction from the Norvice pros, myself, Tyler, um, Braden, Miller is going to be there with us, and Shannon from Tux Fly Shop is going to be there as well. So you're going to get a good, good mix of, of different types of tying and different types of flies. Um, Shannon said they're still fishing in February, so if you can come to the boot camp, you should fish too. There you go, and we're going to fish, we're going to fish, brother, because we're going to hit town at about uh, noontime on Thursday, so we're going to fish Thursday night, Friday. Um, so yeah, that's, that's, uh, that's about it for tonight. We'll hang out here a little bit to get questions. Um, and anything you guys have a question on, please uh, feel free to, uh, to fire away. With the border open. Great night of tying. Thank you. Thanks, CJ. We're using 
Yeah, we're you it yeah, we're using new software and Facebook compresses it. You should see it on our iMac. It is absolutely beautiful. Oh my god. I can see my ugly face just as clear as can be, and Facebook compresses it, and there's unfortunately there's nothing we can do about it. But part of using this new software is we are hopeful that we're going to be able to stream to multiple platforms so we can stream to Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram. Let's fly fishing at the same time right now. Okay. So it's upgraded there. Nice ties. Thank you, Patty. Streamers in North Carolina. You can tie, look at Braden, streamers in North Carolina with laughy face. You can tie little micro game changers and they'll, you know, eat those. Or you could tie your cardiac arrest because they have big browns in um, in the uh, in the tuck. So, hey, yeah. Braden, you can tie some buggers. That's a streamer. Braden right? can tie buggers. Here, <laughs> here Braden, tie a bugger. Oh, uh, oh, by the way, Shannon, the comment saying big mess, I want to fish this go around from Norvice is from Casey Miller. So, oh, okay. apparently Casey wants to fish this time. She hooked into a steelhead, and I guess she's all ready to go now. She yep. bought all her cool gear, and it was 70 degrees each day. So. Yeah. Nah, she, um, you, you would have been proud, Shannon. You would have been proud. She fished her ass off, especially that last day, man. She wanted one more fish, and we got it done. It was at the, 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 the eleventh bell on the last day, and she stuck a big, big, nice, solid hen and on a, um, on a black woolly bugger. On a black woolly bugger. So yeah, it was um, it was good. So now she's been fitting. She's been bitten by the fishing bug. So for sure. So uh, Shannon said the boys from the fly shop went after musky today. Oh boy. How'd you do? Oh boy. Did you do get you that have you bigger rods? Do you have a material list? There will be a material list. Um, <laughs> Brayden, you just said you don't know what a woolly bugger uh -oh. is like two comments ago. I don't, Paul Peters is watching with you. I don't know who he is, but I like his avatar. <laughs> so, The benefit is, at least at this portion, when it's dropping visual, it's not dropping audio. Okay, well, that's good. We'll get it figured out. And yeah. part of, of uh, the... It's going to take a phone call screaming at our uh, internet provider to get the speed. Yeah, I don't think that's it. I don't think that's it. I think it's I think it's something that Facebook's doing. And, and if it is, then we, we'll figure it out. Part of being able to, to, to put that video in that we put in of, of the flies swimming in the water and things like that, that's what this new software allows us to do. And we'll be able to do multiple camera angles and a lot of things. We just We, we just have to learn. You know, we just got to learn our way through it. So <laughs> Shannon goes, we have musky here, and yes, larger rods. And Braden heart reacted before I could finish reading it. <laughs> <laughs> You've ruined him, Shannon. Now, now the, the little trout that he had so much fun catching, he he'll, he's never going to go after him again. Braden, now go for musky. You and Casey can stay back and fish for trout. I would love to stay back and fish uh, <laughs> Clark's Creek for a little wild rainbows. I'll do that all day long. So. All right, if there aren't any questions, we've been on here for about an hour and 40 minutes. Wow, it's, that's long. Well, it... <laughs> big flies. Little Braden Miller did two long flies. And they're big <laughs> flies. So, all right, guys, thank you very much. Uh, remember, share early, share often. We're going to... We, every 50, we're giving away a 10-pack um, of spools, so get a couple more shares in. Remember the Norvice Boot Camp. Give Shannon a call down at Tux Fly Shop tomorrow and start thinking about March Madness. All right, have a good one, guys. All right, guys, thank you. Bye-bye.